what? No. <laughs> I have spent a good bit of October cleaning out the freezers, cooking from what we have, making sure things don't go to waste. Come with me and cook with me while we use up what we have before we start restocking everything. Will I get to the bottom of the freezers? The world may never know. We're gonna do a take on the viral TikTok feta pasta, but we're not using feta because I don't like it. I have in my baking dish some goat cheese instead. Oops. Yeah, some of it's on the floor now. And I have a bunch of cherry tomatoes. Throw a bunch in and kind of see how many I end up with. I'll just kind of pour things in here all willy nilly. So here's basically the deal. You put your feta or goat cheese in the middle of a baking dish and just toss a whole bunch of tomatoes around it. You can use cherry tomatoes, grape tomatoes, whatever tomatoes, add a little bit of garlic, add a little bit of olive oil. I like to add salt, pepper, and crushed red pepper flakes. Baking dish into a 400 degree oven, 30 minutes minimum. I'm gonna check it at 30 minutes. In the meantime, I'll get some pasta water ready to boil. And babao, we have TikTok viral pasta without the feta. Coming up next, of course, like always, it's the story of my freaking life, banana bread. Yes, I still, still have bananas from when Dave decided to buy 100 bananas for $10 at the store or 100 pounds. It was 100 pounds, guys. This is my standard banana bread recipe. I do have it on my website at frugalfitmom.com. I will leave a link down below. This banana bread will freaking change your life. So if you have not tried it, I urge you to go do so. And the bread pans that I like to bake these in are from Ikea. They are a longer, thinner bread pan. They're the same size and volume as a traditional one. I just find they cook a little better. I will leave links down below for all of my kitchen tools that I have if you wanna go check those out. And now that I'm looking at this banana bread, I'm feeling like I need to go make more because as of the voice recording, these are gone. Okay, moving on to some garden produce. I was gifted a ton of garden produce from a friend. So she gave me all these onions, just pulled everything up before it froze. And I was like, you know what? We're gonna do some meal prep with these bad boys. So I got to cooking, prepping all of them and onions straight from the garden. <laughs> Okay, the next meal we are prepping is stuffed squash and zucchini. It's kind of a play on stuffed bell peppers, but because I had all of this beautiful garden produce, I thought it was time to chop them up. I have the onions, I have the squash, I have the zucchini. I'm gutting these out. So you can kind of stuff any vegetable that you have. And I did, of course, have some clearance chorizo in my freezer that I was able to pull out and cook up as well. My favorite way to prep the veggies is to put them all on a baking dish with some oil, salt, and pepper and roast them first. Oh, and I did actually have a few garden bell peppers as well. I just decided to do everything. We're cooking it all, my friends. While my zucchini and squash and peppers roast in the oven, I have this large pan heating up. I have a lot of the innards from the squash and zucchini. I have a bunch of jalapenos, these red things. They are jalapenos. They just sat in my fridge for a long time. The fresh garden onions, this is all garden produce. I'll cook some rice in my Instant Pot to bulk it up a little bit. What I've learned with my family is they like more filling than whatever you're stuffing. So I don't skimp when it comes to the filling. I try and like really, really bulk it up. So here's the chorizo. I'm going at it with my meat masher that I got from the Dollar Tree. In a large mixing bowl, I have my two cups of rice. It was two cups of dry rice cooked in the Instant Pot, about half of a jar, small jar of salsa, just whatever was left in my fridge, and all of the chorizo with peppers and onions and all that. We'll now mix all this together, and this will be our filling. Are you ready to see complete anarchy when you see the way I made these stuffed squash? Yeah, I just was trying to use up everything I had. It ended up into like a squash chorizo rice casserole. Trying my hand at a homemade beef bone broth. Okay, so I have my Instant Pot right here. Two pounds of beef bones, a couple carrots, some garlic, some bay leaves, peppercorn, water, and a splash of vinegar. And we are gonna try and pressure cook this for several hours. So I have a bunch of these packages like this. So I have enough to do two batches. We'll start with this one, see if we like the flavor, how it ends up, and maybe we'll tweak it for the second batch. I think I'm putting in here a rinse, but I'm not 
since we're straining the whole thing when we're done, I'm not too worried about what it's gonna be like. I don't care that the paper's going in here, right? I just want a couple of garlic cloves. Maybe four of those. Good teaspoon. One teaspoon of salt. Generous drizzle there. About one tablespoon of vinegar. You can use whatever kind you have. Oh, I almost forgot my onions. Also one onion. I have these garden onions that I'll just kind of put in whole. And these are really small. Uh, maybe two or three really small ones. Make sure the seal is on. And we'll set it on soup for four hours. Our bone broth is ready. I pulled out uh, most of the bones and a big chunk of, um, well, it's not really meat. We'll call it connective tissue. Over here, I have a soup pot with a strainer. So we'll strain all this out right now and kind of see what we end up with. That looks pretty good. So I have my little canning guy on these. These are like restaurant to-go containers. You can get them on Amazon. And I use them all the time. I just prepped these garden tomatoes, labeled them. So these will go in the freezer. We'll utilize those later for sauce or chili or something like that. I may only need two of these. We'll just kind of see how it goes. And remember, I still have some bones left, so I can do a whole other batch. I know it's nothing new, but it's so good to see you. We do this every day. I'm still so I gotta say it smells amazing. Those will go in the freezer also. Andrew is mixing this up for us. This has been in the pantry for a year, so that's gonna be fabulous. This is the frosting. And while he does that, I am working over here on some pasta sauce. I have some garden onions. These are strong. Garden squash I found, I must have picked a while ago, stuck in my outside fridge. I just found them. Saute these up with these items, uh, this ground turkey and this ground sausage. We're gonna doctor all of this up with some tomatoes, some seasonings, and we'll make a pasta sauce and freeze it for later. Uh, when I am out of town coming up, all Dave has to do is pull it out of the freezer, boil some pasta, mix it together, boom. And I can utilize all of these items without any of them going to waste. Moving right along in the pantry freezer clean out today, I pulled out chocolate chip protein muffin mix by Kodiak Cakes and the Krusty's plant-based muffin mix. As you can see, I paid 79 cents for that in wild blueberry. This is just my opinion. The plant-based by Krusty's is not a hit in my family. I have them, so I'm going to use them. My kids are kind of meh about it, but we will mix up both of these right now for breakfast for tomorrow morning. I love making muffins like the day or night before. It just makes mornings so, so easy. I did come over and pull out a bunch of stuff from the pantry, like kind of for the week that I wanted to work on that I'm just keeping on the buffet for right now. So I also have the chocolate chip one, the protein muffin mix, also a little disappointed with that one. It's just kind of meh. I think the protein one is better than the plant-based one, but still a little disappointing. I do have this honey cornbread mix, which we'll do with a dinner probably. I like to make this into muffins. Cinnamon roll, oatmeals. The Better Oats is one of my favorite brands. So we'll do oatmeal a little bit. So this is kind of our pantry clean out for this week as far as breakfasts go. When 
you're cleaning out your pantry, don't forget to pick up your canned soups. For lunch today, I will just heat up this bean with bacon condensed soup. I have a few oyster crackers to go with it. Super simple, super easy. And one more thing out of my pantry. We have a freezer and pantry dinner tonight. Some homemade pasta sauce that I made and froze. Green beans, garden green beans that I froze. One loaf of this Italian bread. I get that from Trade Market. And I think, I think I got these from Trade Market too, this pasta. Serving pasta and bread and green beans with a homemade sauce. Didn't go to the store at all. If I didn't tell you before, happy November, and if you didn't see <laughs> me and Dave's Halloween costume, you should be following me on Instagram. And also, I can't believe I've barely even said this in a video. Did you guys know that I have a podcast now? Frugal Fit Mom podcast is available on all podcast platforms. We do one episode a week. It's typically questions that I get over on Instagram or really interesting comments or interviews with people. So if you have like a topic or a question you want us to address, you can DM me over on Instagram, Frugal Fit Mom 6. Now that we're at the end of this freezer clean out video, I wanted to show you what my freezer looks like right now at the beginning of November. First of all, it still needs a wipe down. So just like this is, I don't do cleaning content on YouTube, maybe I should. Uh, so I don't clean things like this very often. Why does it not look that empty? Oh my gosh, why? Oh my gosh. I have been telling Dave <laughs> to do these smoothies, these dang freaking smoothies for so long. I'm gonna have my kids eat this ice cream tonight. I'm tired of that. For the love of all that is holy, the bananas. And maybe we'll get these out to thaw and we'll do some sausage for breakfast. I'm going to make breakfast tomorrow. What do you think about that? To be fair, no, there's nothing to say. It still doesn't look good. We have a lot of work to do. Even though I spent the entire month, it feels like, cleaning this out. I mean, I did make a, I did make a dent in the outside freezer and I did make a dent in the downstairs freezer. But this is the one we're in like every day and it just doesn't seem to get any better, ever. How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. How do you walk across the desert? One step at a time. This is a marathon, not a sprint. If I have recipes, links down below. Thanks for hanging out with me, bye.